You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy black heel. Hey everyone, it's Jonathan, and welcome back to Every Version Ever. This time we're talking about one of the most obscure versions of The Grinch, which is odd because it's also one of the most recent. Dan from TYT Reviews and Nikki from Trivia Theater are back to join me to talk about the much maligned NBC Live musical production of The Grinch that aired in 2020. And before we get into things, I just want to make note of that I think this episode marks the first time I have ever reached every version ever of something. Unless you want to get pedantic and count times when we did a one-off miniseries covering something with only two or three adaptations like Little Shop of Horrors or Lady and the Tramp, then yes, I guess we did cover every version ever of those. But as far as something with more than three versions based on a book, as far as I know, today's episode on the Grinch musical is actually the first time we've ever truly hit every version ever of something. What a milestone to hit with this movie. <laughs> When I started this thing, I really thought that this was going to be one of those things that everybody on the internet just decided to hate for whatever reason, and it wasn't that bad. I was wrong. <laughs> 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 I, I made the same mistake when I watched another, uh, th this is, should be, this is a pattern, uh, apparently, another NBC live musical, the Allison Williams Peter Pan. Ooh. I was like, the, this is, this is going to be fine. <laughs> There's no way this is going to be bad. Because I had just watched a different version, the Kathy Rigby version. And I loved that. I was like, this mm. is going to, it's just going to be another fun musical play. It was not. <laughs> there's a reason <laughs> that people hated it <laughs> and this is a lot more of the same i think i actually i think i actually prefer the alice williams peter pan to this <laughs> <laughs> the, this just kept going getting worse and worse and worse it started out okay well i mean it started out bad i did not like old max from the get-go but then it got to the who's and i was like oh, this is fine this this is just going to be Fine. And then it just kept going downhill. <laughs> At least it was consistent. Like, that's one thing you can say. This was a consistently downhill experience. Yes. Oh, it was positively dashing through the snow. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I'm not a musical hater. I like a lot of musicals. So mm -hmm. I thought that this was just going to be a lot of, like, a lot of people hate musicals. So I figured that this is going to be with, like an overhated musical. And it's one of those things where, like, that everybody doesn't need to sing all the all their feelings, and like the first song with all the who's, like that was fine, but then the songs just kept getting worse and worse. Also, <laughs> I will say this: there's a time and place. There are some musicals that can do like Les Mis. Every single thing is is music, but it's not something that every single musical needs to do. You can have some some spoken word stuff in between. Not that it's going to stop the absolutely gushing wound that this um, musical suffers from, but it would have at least put a Band-Aid on it to, you know, put aside some of that, you know, level of gushing. Mm. Do you think this would have been better with a different cast? Could could this be saved somehow? I So here's the thing, and Dan and I discussed this. I will give this props for what it did well. The singers were decent. The I appreciated the work that was put in the background. Like there was yeah. a lot of work put towards the the sets and the costumes, and you could tell that there was a lot of work put into it. And little details like um when they have the the hills in the background, the little houses had like little smoke coming out of the um, chimneys, and it was the kind of if you go yeah. by the book. <laughs> <laughs> That just sounds weird. I I'm know. not calling them chimbleys. <laughs> On the plus side, it does make the Mary Poppins song "Chim Chim Cherry" so much better. Chim Chimbley, Chim Chim. Oh yeah. Chim Chim Boo. <laughs> um, but 
I don't think that, I think it was a plot thing. It was a storytelling aspect that made this not good. Now, whether you attribute that to the way that the songs were written or just the general way that it was output, I, I think that's where this fell down. Absolutely. I, th- I think a, a huge improvement could be get rid of the narrator. I did not like old Max at all. He was the worst part of this. Well, and to have the story from his perspective was just kind of, it didn't add anything. You could have had them just talking and had the same response, had the same experience as having, you know, a narrator. Yeah. Yeah. No, it it would have made it so much better. And young Max didn't need to talk either. That was also strange. I think I just don't like people acting like animals in a serious role. This was not funny enough for them to get away with acting the way they were. No, not at all. (laughs) I mean, I usually I try to measure my enjoyment of a film by the amount of notes that I take. So if I'm enthusiastic about a film, whether it's a positive enthusiasm or a negative enthusiasm, you'll find that I write reams and reams of notes because there's a lot I want to talk about. There's a lot that I feel either needs to be justified as to why I don't like a film or needs to be applauded and pointed out if it's something that I like. Um Therefore, you can also sort of extrapolate from that that the less notes I write, the less I liked the film and the clearer the reasons for it. Um, For Jim Carrey's Grinch, when we did the podcast for that, I wrote eight pages of notes. I had a lot to talk about. For the 2018 Grinch film, I wrote three pages of notes, and I was largely kind of middling about it. For this film, I wrote four bullet points. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> four bullet points that's less than me and i thought i didn't write enough <laughs> i uh, I'll, I'll read them out loud as as follows uh the first one is i do not care for this film it's way too long um point two is the set design is the best part of this otherwise it's way too overbearing mm-hmm. um and part three is even illumination didn't have fart jokes um <laughs> that, that was the exact point that this completely dove off the cliff and all the way to the bottom of my ranking <laughs> <laughs> pretty much pretty much i mean i just i i sat through this thing and and i, I said this to trev just just before i uh, i left this evening to go to a, a family meal um the grinch is like a 30 to 40 page children's book it should be no longer than an hour that's the mm-hmm. absolute top end for me i think holiday special couple of commercial breaks an hour block is probably about right for a grinch film realistically half an hour gets everything you need in there um this was an hour and 23 minutes and it felt like they rang every single last drop of creative possibility out of every single drawing, scribble, written on the back of a napkin, line of dialogue, everything they could possibly pulp out of Mm -hmm. that book, they did. And they didn't do it in a way that was creative or interesting. They just did it in a way that made a lot of songs that all sounded very much the same. Yes. It was like every single... I'm like, we're getting to the point where the Grinch is dressed as a Texan going to a department store and they're talking about (laughs) buying various gifts. And I'm at this point, I am checked out. I am sat there going we have had 40 songs so far about buying presents for christmas and how the grinch is going to steal it when is the grinch going to steal christmas i'm slowly (laughs) losing the will to live um just horrendous viewing experience the the only thing i will give it credit the only thing i will honestly put my hand on my heart and say is the exact point that triv raised earlier which is i think that the set designs were quite creative in terms of going for that pop-up book aesthetic Mm -hmm. but ultimately i think the biggest thing that let this film down is the medium with which it was captured in like it's it's not a great experience at all really altogether but i feel like if you went to the theater to see this kind of a production and they had audience involvement and they had uh mm-hmm. actors who would improv a little bit depending on where that was taking place and you actually got to have you know the cast and crew interacting with the stage and various other bits and pieces i could see this actually being a kind of fun night out i did i did write a note to that effect i was wondering to myself would this be better if i actually saw it live yeah. Well, and if you're interested, it has actually been running for two years um, between Broadway and like a traveling show. Well, it, the play itself started in the 90s. 
Like oh, it did was, it? It was first written in '94. Oh. oh wow! And it's been oh. it's been going and having things added on to it, and it debuted on Broadway in 2006. So it's the the bones of the play are from the '90s, and the what we've got now probably started in 2006. I think this might have added some songs. It definitely added some nods to the fact that it was on TV. Because at one point yeah. he yes. goes off about how, um, like, oh God, was it the screen dimensions or something? There was something specific about like a, a TV format versus like live. Yeah, there was some other talk about getting his best side. Yeah, and, and looking into the camera saying, "You at home, I hate your couch." Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, this, this was the thing. I, I think having it in an isolated studio with no audience with just relentless singing and i think another thing that probably helped it on broadcast but doesn't help it on the rewatch is there were commercial breaks mm -hmm. i think having five minutes where you can you know go up to use the bathroom or grab a drink or a bite to eat or you know maybe even pause it and go do something else probably helped to break it up a little bit because if you don't have those breaks there you are literally just being pounded one after another with songs it's just song tiny bit of dialogue song tiny bit of dialogue song commercial break and it just does that for an hour and 23 minutes with the breaks it probably would have been two hours long all in i'm i'm curious like they call this live was it actually live when it aired like no it was normally so you know with normally those it would have been done live but because it was done because of covid and restrictions it was actually filmed two days previous okay well then I have more criticisms. <laughs> 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 they needed to get him a costume change at some point. His mm. makeup was pretty much deteriorating by the end of this thing. It was all over his Santa thing. It looked disgusting. The scene where he drinks all the milk so that he can fart for whatever reason. The milk is all over him. And when it does a close-up on Cindy Lou hugging him, it's like she's hugging a soggy milk-covered coat and i'm just like this is disgusting <laughs> <laughs> like i know the grinch is supposed to be a gross person but this is this is disgusting and i hate this <laughs> if it was not live why can't you get the guy a makeup retouch get him a new jacket why did you have to shoot this all in one go well yeah. and it might have been like they only had so much time to to get the shots but it definitely wasn't done live it was recorded so whether they did it all in quote one take or not i'm not sure but um it was filmed two days before maybe it was um reducing contact between people a little bit because restrictions around how many people you could mingle with limits on distance maybe that was a factor maybe the makeup people could only you know touch him up so many times or be interactive with the crowd so with the other actors so many times before they kind of i don't know hit some kind of covid limit whereas like you can't interact with these people anymore because pre-vaccination so yeah, it was such a weird time then. Yeah. yeah. From that perspective. That is true, but I feel like somebody should have been paying attention to how gross his jacket was getting. <laughs> well, I mean, there was a point I, I touched on with Triv just before I, I jumped away, which was I this very, very strongly to me feels like what I would call a background fodder movie. Like, this strikes me as the kind of film that you would have on in the background in an evening or a night where you're decorating your house with Christmas decorations or you're doing Christmas baking or you're wrapping presents or you're, you know, you've got some family members around, you're playing some video games and it's just on in the background as kind of noise. It's the kind of, of thing that you look up occasionally, watch about 20 seconds of it and then go back to doing whatever you were doing and you just do that periodically over the hour. I couldn't imagine anyone sitting down consciously slapping their hands together with glee to hit play to watch an hour and 23 minutes of this with the same dedication and focus that you would an actual film it just feels too 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 samey all the way through to be something that somebody could could really relish sitting down and watching a full hour and 23 minutes of this somebody would have to be doing something else while this is running in the background I wish I'd been doing something else. <laughs> I was so <laughs> bored through most of this. I was either bored or disgusted. <laughs> I think literally my only positives are what you guys already said. The backgrounds did look very good. I liked the illustrated way that they made things in the background. And then weirdly, I think this might be the best Cindy Lou Who. 
of any of the versions I've seen. She was the only person that I didn't hate in this. <laughs> she actually felt like a real kid. Towards the end, the script was deteriorating as much as the makeup. So she wasn't as great towards the end. But at the beginning, I was like, this is like my favorite Cindy Lou who I've ever seen. <laughs> Out of any of them? May, well, maybe not the original, but the original, she's on screen so little that it's hard to judge. But like, mm. I liked her better than the Illumination one. I, As much as I like the Jim Carrey version, it's not her that I like. Like, she's fine, but she doesn't feel like a real kid. This felt more like a real kid than even the one in the Jim Carrey version. Fair. Yeah, yeah, I'd probably go with that. It's kind of um, winner by default rather than <laughs> yeah. Kind of. It's like a, it's like a glorified. It's like um, a step above a participation trophy. Congratulations, you suck the least. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> yeah, unique like, last place. Like with the Jim Carrey version, I like her, but like most of the rest of the movie, it's mostly out of nostalgia, and I can see why other people do not like her. Mm. Looking at her objectively, she does not read as an actual real child. She reads like an adult writing a child. And to some extent, this does also, but it's the closest to actually feeling like a real kid that any of the Cindy Lou's who have had a bigger role in the story have had. She just feels more like a real kid. Yeah, I could get behind that. Well, she had a flower growing out of her head. <laughs> True. It was a bit of a unique choice as well to give pretty much all of the Who's either pink or purple hair. I liked a lot of them. The ones that were wigs, anyways. The the dad, his hair looked like somebody had sprayed on temporary hair color. Like, my, mm. my friend got a bunch of temporary hair color years ago to have... Like, she wanted to do... I don't know what you call it. The, the color powders that you, like, throw in the air. But she wanted everybody to also color their hair. His hair looked like mine did, which is not good. <laughs> <laughs> Like the they needed to give him a wig. It looked it looked like normal hair with a little bit of pink spritzed in it. But the mom looked great. She had a wig. So mm. the wigs looked great. Anybody who had to color their hair with spray or whatever they did, it didn't look that great. Yeah. Hmm. Well, here's a random question for you guys. Do you think like so Dan and I were talking about this and it made a lot of sense. Do you think that they pulled Kind of the 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 format for st the story from the Jim Carrey uh, Grinch, because a lot of the stuff that went down seemed like it kind of matched at least a little bit with the way that this set up, like you know more of the focus on presence and things of that nature. It just seemed to have a lot of those influences. It felt like they were trying to do the original story, but with touches from other versions particularly mm. the Jim Carrey version, because I felt like Matthew Morrison's Grinch was like a dollar store Jim Carrey Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> I did enjoy his emo haircut, though. That was quite fetching. <laughs> well, it was like it was like they were trying, but not getting there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did. Uh, and I guess and the reason I brought up the Jim Carrey thing, in addition to kind of the, the way that laid out between the kids and the adults, like the adults had like kind of the pixie nose that you would expect from a who and the kids just had their normal noses. That feels like they kind of made the same decision they did in the Jim Carrey one. It also could be because of COVID restrictions, the less face time with kids. True. Because I can imagine yeah. it would take longer to get a kid to get their makeup to look great than have an adult say, sit here, we're going to quickly get this on you and get out of your face. Yeah, that's also, I, I didn't think it. about that, but that's a really good point. Man, the early 2020s were weird, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Just the early 2020s, though. Oh, yeah, everything after 2024 was fine. <laughs> that remains to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anybody watching this in 2026? Yeah, last year was fine, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, Great. totally. totally. <laughs> uh, I mean, aliens, so. who would have guessed it? Yeah. <laughs> They look like the baby Grinch from the Jim Carrey movie. <laughs> They're <Yeah>. really cute. <laughs> they were terrifying until uh, until they grew up. Now they're just horrific. <laughs> Very charismatic, though. <laughs> well, they do ha they do have a tendency to eat our windows, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's such a good job that the gremlins turned up and fought them back into the sea where they belonged. <laughs>
You heard it here first, folks. Gizmo versus Baby Grinch coming to Paramount Plus 2026. <laughs> I mean, I'd watch it. And then so strange that they that they did a Snyder Cut Gremlins versus Baby Grinch. I didn't expect that. But it was oh, pretty yeah. epic. Yeah, it was fascinating. I was so glad that they did the chrome version where it was all in black and white. Oh, yeah. It really helped to bring the lighting up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Better than a Snyder cut of the Grinch musical. Oh, yeah. goodness. Oh, you know, it's still running to this day. Yeah. I don't know. Given the choice, the very first broadcast is still running to this day because it's not over yet. <laughs> they made the mistake of having the Grinch go shopping, and now every time he pulls something out of his shopping cart, he has to sing a five minute song about it. <laughs> they had a sale on, they had a sale on corned beast hash. He's going to be here all week. <laughs> and don't get us even started on the uh the the part of the uh the musical that involves going to the euphemism and an yeah. extended scene with the euphemism i mean that could have been more entertaining than half the songs we already got yeah, yeah. yeah. well do you feel we've we've rather gone rather silly with this one but um <laughs> yeah. I, i'm laughing more at our conversation than i did at the entire movie <laughs> <laughs> And that in itself does not take much. <laughs> oh, no. But uh, to summarize my feelings, I did not care for The Grinch, the musical. I did not care for it. Uh, Dan, the fool, this uncle is me. I was trying to do a Sam I Am, but I, it, there's not really a lot that rhymes with musical. Musical, I mean, maybe. Give it, give it to the people who wrote this. They'll find you a rhyme. They will oh, find a rhyme. <laughs> No matter how much they have to force it, they will find a way to make every line rhyme. <laughs> In time. Uh, with a lime. It's a, it's honestly quite a crime. It's sublime. They're going to do time. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, that was an in-depth conversation. <laughs> um, I think what broke me with this whole experience was the whole, um, when they're at the shopping mall place i just that whole part was just like oh my god we we could have spent time watching the grinch like make things and and put stuff together for his whole heist but we're watching all these people like talk about presents and complain about presents and then grandpa goes off on a random tangent and then they try to bring it back with oh look at this amazing rocking horse we're going to have to save up our money so we can get this for Cindy Lou because she deserves something really nice. The train has left the station. And then the Grinch comes in as Cowboy Elvis and does oh. weird things all over the place for some reason. Yeah, for some reason is a good way to describe <laughs> this whole, why did this happen? For some reason. Why did that happen? For some reason. Ugh. Just, a ter I mean, I, I, the, I suppose the biggest thing that bothered me was just the fact that they had a very clear story and they just padded it so badly. Yeah. They just, they, they, the, the key beats, I mean, there's the bit where um, the Grinch is building his Santa suit and that's at like 50 minutes in and you're sitting there thinking, what ha actually happened in the 40 minutes prior to this moment? Because like... The, the Karloff, the, basically all the versions of the Grinch films, around about the half hour mark, are doing the right we're preparing for Christmas thing. So how this musical somehow managed to extend all of the scenes so much so that, you know, it just leads to a very underwhelming finale. I don't know. I just, I, but I, I basically got to about the hour mark and just went, I, I can't believe there's 20 minutes left of this. Um <laughs> Well, the Who's had to sing about Christmas, and then Old Max and Young Max had to sing about Christmas, and then the Grinch had to sing about Christmas, and then they had to go to the store and sing about stuff, and then they had to sing about Christmas some more, <laughs> and then they had to go to the store and sing about more stuff. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Are you telling me that this movie was about Christmas? And what? stuff. <laughs> what? If, uh, if Old Max and New Max touch, will it end up creating a paradox like Time Cop? I that hope would so. have made it a whole lot more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> they just both turn into like a weird homogenized puddle of screaming goo and fall <laughs> to the floor. I'd watch that. That'd be fun. And that's the thing with this whole with the whole Max thing. I don't like I understand that they're trying to say, oh, well, we're gonna go back and look at old me. But nothing is improved by that whole setup. 
Uh, like a why did they need to and b why did they do it so weirdly because young max and old max interact and there's two who's that i didn't realize till halfway through were actually i think part of the old max universe or whatever but also they kind of go back in time like i don't really understand what was up with the green-haired who's they kept doing things with everybody and i was so confused by what their point was oh, like I at think one they're... point they were helping them steal christmas and i was like what on earth <laughs> i was kind of assuming that they were state like the quote stage ha stage hands i suppose but like they had I mean, the... roles I was the just thing confused. that threw me was near the beginning of the film when old max is talking and he introduces the grinch um and because he's supposed to be in the future, you wouldn't expect the Grinch to have too much dealings with future Max, because it's obviously an event set in the past. But then future Grinch hand comes out and puts his hand over old Max's mouth, which implies that he went back to being mean after the events of this film, which makes even less sense. Like, what, did the Grinch relapse or something? I hate to be one of those pedantic nerds who's like, actually, I think you're fine. The Grinch changed his ways and went good, but like, they, they, the whole point of the film is that the Grinch turns over a new leaf and spends the rest of his days loving Christmas and, you know, being being a valued part of the community. But like, in the opening moments of the film, they actually play it out as if future Grinch is still mean, which is like, well, then what's the point of this musical? Well, Grinch has a hard time changing his uh, milk-soaked jacket. <laughs> it's uh, every time the Grinch gets concussed, he uh, change he changes <laughs> um, full-blown allegiances. Like uh, they have to hit him on the head with a mallet, he suddenly turns mean. Hit him again, he goes back to being fine. He's just he's good Grinch again. <laughs> Falls down a well, mean Grinch gets kicked by a mule, good Grinch. I don't know. <laughs> Well, aside from the writing, what did you guys think of the acting? Because it felt to me like everybody was overacting, in, but not in a good way. Like, not in a way that made sense for even a stage musical. And that's what I was going to say. It kind of felt like um, what you would expect from people that are really excited to be in a role, but they they amp it up to 15 when 11 was all that they needed. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of, like, a bad church play. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys, oh, yeah. do, you, do you guys know who Jenny Nicholson is? Oh yeah, she did the the whole uh, video on uh, bad church plays. Yeah, the the yeah. Easter plays. I, even though this didn't have like a Christian theme, it felt like something that that church would do. Except they didn't crucify Cindy Lou Who at the end. <laughs> well, according to the reviews, they definitely crucified the guy that played the Grinch. Like uh, of all the people that were at fault for it and regarded as the lead, you know, even if it's not your fault, it's still kind of your fault. I, you know, I'd actually thinking about it, Jonathan, that does make a lot of sense. I could now totally see like two thirds of the way into the film, like a spotlight coming down and some <laughs> celebrity <laughs> mega church owner walking out on stage and going, you see the evils of the commodity are <laughs> rife and rich through Whoville, but you have the power to change it. I want you to reach deep into your souls and your wallet. Let's call this number below and we'll sort in fact actually all the way through while we were watching the musical like whenever the ad breaks came up i would do a sponsored by bumper just just for my own amusement so it'd be <laughs> like dr zeus's the grinch who stole christmas sponsored by tums you're gonna need them <laughs> <laughs> i actually think a uh, mega church pastor waltzing on stage would have made this better <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Do we have him waltz on, or do we have him come down on like wires, just sort of floating? Oh yeah, he's, he's got he's got to be like an angel who, he's got to have the prosthetic uh, nose, but also big, giant, multicolored rainbow wings and a pink wig, <laughs> <laughs> a pulpit that's comedically larger than him, Joe, just the top of his eyes. <laughs> uh, see, we could have made a better musical, honestly. We we could have. <laughs> As long as you don't ask me to rhyme anything with orange. I don't want to rhyme anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got enough rhymes from this one. It's like a weird disease. Oh man, I got the rhymes so bad right now. <laughs> Quick, eat some subtraction soup. 
Oh no, you've oh. eaten contraction soup. All your rhymes are going to be really brief now. Run, fun, fun, <laughs> none. Ah! Warning, consuming contraction soup may cause verbal diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> also, you're going to need Tums, which sponsors this particular podcast. <laughs> the iHeart Movies Podcast, brought to you by The Syllabus. Mmm, that's good learning. <laughs> Well, I think that's all I've got to say about this train wreck. I ran out of stuff to say about ten minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, my my three bullet points really did some legwork on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I have three words to de- to describe this movie. Oh yes, yeah, stink, stank, stunk. There, I have other words, but I can't say them on this <laughs> podcast because that would be rather rude. <laughs> blank dumpster blank. Yeah, needless to say, this one did not feature high in my rankings. No, yes. It, <laughs> I, it, normally when I get through even like a bad movie, I'm like, if you really like this story, you could see this one. It, it's not good, but eh, it's entertaining enough. I don't mm-hmm. think I'd even recommend this to somebody who likes The Grinch. I, it was such a chore to get through. I was just so either bored or disgusted or cringing through the entire thing. I, I, there's so little redeeming value that I really can't recommend it, even to a completionist. I'm like, yeah, you could watch it, but you'll be happier with your life if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that, you know, in the in the grand scheme of, and I know you said that with the live musicals, you don't mind them much, but I don't think that any of the live musicals that NBC did to this point None of them were well-received, but this one was definitely bottom of the barrel when it came to those. I think I've done three of them on my podcast now, and I really liked The Wiz. But then the Alice and Williams Peter Pan was not good. It had some moments, but overall, I couldn't really recommend that one. It 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 would be towards the bottom of my list. It was just, it wasn't fun like the other versions of the musical had been. But with this one, there's so little redeeming value that it's like, I don't know why they even made this. Like somebody halfway through the production should have seen that this wasn't going to improve by the time they aired and they should have made some drastic changes or just canceled it. Yeah. See, that's what makes me think that what probably happened that got this greenlit in the first place was NBC sent some talent scouts out to see check out sort of local musical scenes and sort of see what musicals were out there. And they saw this in a live theatre environment and it probably was a really good night for them and it kind of went well. And that maybe they sort of went, well, you know what? It's coming up to Christmas. Everybody loves The Grinch. They'll probably just tune in based off the nostalgia of, you know, the Jim Carrey version or the original version. There's the Benedict Cumberbatch film, which is still fairly new, so it's probably still fairly fresh in people's minds. I'm pretty sure that we could probably take a chance on this and it'd work out fine. And they didn't realise that they couldn't just one-to-one it from a stage environment to a TV studio. That plus COVID limitations almost certainly hobbled this, I would say. But I I mm-hmm. think that's the only reason it made it to the screen is maybe some talent scout went and watched a good a good run and went, yeah, that'll work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think part of it is the limitations of the TV. Because, like, it's not one of the NBC musicals, but the Kathy Rigby Peter Pan. One of the things that I really liked about that was the, like, incorporating the audience, even just a little bit. Of course, you've got the scene where everybody has to clap to bring Tinkerbell back to life. But, like, at some point, she flies out over the audience, and you have little shots of the audience throughout. Even that, like, it couldn't have saved this version, but I think that would have improved it a little bit, just so that you could see that there were people there having fun. Right. Mm. I can't imagine anybody watching this and having fun. I think an audience reaction, even if it was a canned one, probably would have gone a long way. Because, like, if it, the, I mean, if you've ever seen them on YouTube, there are a few channels that take old classic sitcoms and they'll play clips that are like seen as, you know, the iconic moments of that sitcom, the funniest bits, mm-hmm. and they'll play them with the canned laughter and the audience participation. But then they'll also do a stripped off version where it's got no laughter, no audience reaction at all. And you find that the bits, when there's no audience reaction, actually aren't that funny Mm -hmm. and it's the fact that they've got the audience properly gut laughing in the background that kind of makes you almost subconsciously go oh yeah okay yeah that's kind of funny i think had this had audience 
involvement? Had it not just been like an isolated studio? Had it had a bit more noise, a bit more chatter, some laughter, things like that? I think it might have softened it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because as it stands, it comes across as a little bit clinical. Yeah. And that, that, it also, it is a very small cast too. It doesn't feel like a proper town. It feels like mm. there's a couple families. Yeah. And that's it. It just, it feels off compared to any other version of the Grinch we've seen over the last month or whatever. Right. It just feels wrong somehow. Well, the thing is on a, on a proper stage setting, having that, you know, your chorus of people and there was what, probably 12 extras, 15? Roughly, probably. I mean, that, that size of a, of a backup cast, you wouldn't think anything of it. But when you have a that large of a space and you know it's a TV setting, you do expect there to be more put out there. And they kept doing the wide shots that showed like this little small cast with just a few props in the background on a giant stage. Yeah, it just also made it feel really weird. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it comes to something when I can say I enjoyed YouTube parodies of The Grinch more than the actual licensed broadcast versions of The Grinch. Well, with this version, it's not hard to do. Agreed. <laughs> mm. I completely forgot to mention the Where Are You Christmas song. Obviously, that came from the Jim Carrey version. But the way the musical interpreted that song, I was just shocked at how bizarre it was. Because the song is supposed to be this sweet... like It's another thing where it's like a little kid written as an, as an adult but like looking back on Christmas and wondering where the Christmas spirit has gone, like, where are you Christmas? But the way the musical did it, all the who's sing it after Christmas has been stolen. So they're literally singing about all their Christmas presents getting stolen. <laughs> 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 I was like, what on earth? Someone did oh. not understand this song at all. <laughs> oh no, this is, this is much worse. Yeah. I'm glad I've now put it at the very bottom of the pile. I just, <laughs> <laughs> bad bad movie no biscuit not only that but uh we're gonna take you out back and shoot you <laughs> bit harsh <laughs> <laughs> fine we're gonna take it out back and to find some way to, to take away its favorite thing and, and make it make it sad and and lonely that's just, it sounds mean spirited. Trivia, you are you a Grinch? Is yes. This, this transform this the the musical has made me a Grinch. You're a mean <laughs> one, Mrs. Triv. <laughs> <laughs> that's Miz, thank you very much. Ah, Miz. Yeah, but that doesn't scan right. I can't you're a mean one, Ms. Triv. <laughs> it's, it's missing a syllable. <laughs> we'll get the we'll get the Grinch musical people to find a rhyming word. It'll it'll work out. It'll be fine. Oh, 100 percent I mean they managed to <laughs> match all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I would be curious to know um, of the people that defend the musical. And obviously there is the classic reasons that people like go for anything, but I'd be really curious to see someone that would rank the musical, you know, say number one or two, like what is, what is it about the musical that, that drives it for them? Is it, is it, you know, that they love the music? Is it the people in it? Is it the fact that it was, they saw it live you know, live or quote live, I should say, I, I would be curious to know because I mean, everything, everyone has such, you, you know, unique reasons as to why something, you know, speaks to them. Are there people who would rank this? As I don't, one? don't know. I'm, 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 I'm trying to put out, put it out there as, you know, I would, I would be curious if there are people that are, you know, what the reasonings would be. That sounds to me like a challenge for the comments. <laughs> <laughs> If you are out there and are of men sound, mind, body, and energy, please leave a comment below if you think The Grinch Musical is your favourite one of these Grinch <laughs> movies. You don't have to go into detail, but at least 500 words explaining why would be succinct. <laughs> Thank you. I bet the musical itself would have fans. Oh, yeah. Like the stage musical. I don't, mm. I, it's hard for me to imagine that someone would see the tv version of the stage musical and think yes that's my grinch i'm just looking here one one two three 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 well done uh i thought for limited cast and probably budget the vocalists were great i like the perspective they took with the story nice change from the same old same old i enjoyed it would probably be better in person 
So fun. I'm not sure why people are giving it such horrid ratings and reviews as expected. Lame is question mark. You have to watch it with an open mind, heart and eyes. Enjoyed the kids and the costumes and the talent. There isn't a song that's going to make the charts, but they aren't awful. It's bouncy and bright and faithful to the story and spirit of Seuss. Is it? Oh, now that person's making me feel like a real Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad considering. Uh, honestly, I've seen worse. I give the art director costume and makeup 10 out of 10. Music was well performed, as were the dances. Writing was weak. Performance was excellent. No one was phoning it in. Uh, love the use of cartoon songs with the mute with the movie and new materials. Excellent way to get the kids into what a live show is. At least it wasn't Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen Hallmark movies that I would way more watch before this one. <laughs> yeah, that feels like someone that is taking a very like. <laughs> Oh, God, here's a 10 out of 10. The most unique and entertaining shows I've ever seen. I don't typically enjoy musicals or plays. However, this was wonderful and entertaining. A very unique and exciting way to experience the Grinch at Christmas. I guess it takes all kinds of people. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Kids will love it. For Grinch fans that hate the Jim Carrey version. Uh, for those of us out there who, who hold the Grinch a special place and dislike the Jim Carrey version which was awful. <laughs> yes, it felt a bit rushed and things <clears throat> left out, but it doesn't make me, but it does make me want to see it in the real at a local theater. When it comes to my town, no one will change my mind on this. Okay. <laughs> Holiday movie for generations to come. No movie has ever. Okay. This one feels a bit facetious. No movie has ever grasped my focus as much as Dr. Seuss's the Grinch musical. Matthew Morrison plays a captivating role as the Grinch, along with Dennis O'Hare, as the most convincing act of a dog I've ever seen. Boo Boo is absolutely peaked in the role of young Max, so convincing it was hard for me to distinguish between the two Maxes. A brand new iconic movie for the holidays. What? I think somebody was... <laughs> also, another one. <laughs> another one, 10 of 10 out of 10. Cute! I love the diversity of all the characters in the musical. Matthew Morrison was handsomely green as the Grinch. Max, the dog narrator, was lovable, and the costumes and aesthetics were pristine. And by the end, his collar was handsomely green as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, 10 out of 10, catchy songs. Not sure why this is getting such bad reviews, but I thoroughly enjoyed the musical numbers. A lot of songs got stuck in my head. It was a fun production. It was a stage production. So without the help of music or movie special effects and post-production work, everyone did a great job of telling the story we all know and love. I liked older Max as a narrator of the story. Younger Max was very cheerful and puppy-like. And the Grinch was Grinchy a bit, a bit more elvis -y than I anticipated. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to dunk on anybody's, like, movie choices if if you genuinely enjoy the musical grinch more power to you yeah it's confusing but you do you <laughs> absolutely yeah. i just i all i ask is if you if you do think that the grinch musical is like one of the best adaptations of the grinch who stole christmas could you please start a letterboxd or some kind of movie <laughs> tracking account i just i just want to see what your taste is <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I, I, it's not that I want to study you, it's just I want to <laughs> observe you. Make no mistake, Dan wants to study you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the letterbox right now. <laughs> People are just writing weird reviews. Someone says, I was trying to hate watch the Benedict Cumberbatch Grinch and somehow stumbled into something far more sinister. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you try and hate watch things. You end up down a rabbit hole of things that are so much worse. Mm. Someone wrote, I refuse to watch this. I'm scared of Matthew Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else wrote, Matthew Morrison, please stop. Please give me my family back. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, I think we can probably put this one to bed. We will be back one more time to do a ranking of all the different Grinch versions. I've got a real quick question. Can we actually can we actually bury this like under a rock someplace unknown? <laughs> no, Trev, if we bury it, it'll bear fruit. I don't want to be picking Grinch the musical spin-offs off a tree for the next forty years. 
technically NBC has done all they can to bury it. I had to search and search and search and search before I found a copy of this we could watch. <laughs> they have done a very good job hiding this from the internet. <laughs> Jonathan, you may want to change your locks. You're probably on the NBC <laughs> register now. They will come and find you. That does raise an interesting point, and I it's not in the same realm, but um, the Star Wars holiday special, that, that kind of runs into the same thing. If it hadn't been that one person that got a copy of it, yeah, I, I, I kind of, when I was watching this, it kind of gave me that vibe, so... I had a lot more fun watching the Star Wars holiday special than this. Oh, well, yeah. Well, you watched it with me. What I mean, what else is there to say, you know? Uh, the, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But like, I am i don't like the idea of media being lost to time, but I would not shed a tear if this one was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think that there's not a tar pit deep enough, quite frankly, but uh, I shall keep looking. <laughs> well until the next episode do you guys want to let people know where they can find you if they'd like more from you nikki uh you can find me here on youtube at trivial theater i i don't do any live play versions of anything so feel free to step in the theater and it's a live musical grinch free zone i do a wide array of random obscure and straight up bad movies and there's always something new so stop by and say hello and dan uh, once again, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, you can find me at TYTD Reviews on YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Uh, we are on a little bit of a hiatus over the summer, but we'll be back in the fall. And we upload every Friday cult films and other strange oddities. We are also now medically licensed as 100% Grinch free. So you'll be glad to know that we have <laughs> that, that there. <laughs> so, how did you survive this if you're 100% cringe free? Um, it was a very difficult challenge. Quite frankly, I'm I am at risk of reinfection. So um, <laughs> Oh. Yeah. I, I did it because I care about you guys and I didn't want you having to deal with this alone. So we're Aww. all in this together. <laughs> <laughs> the sacrifices we make for our friends. <laughs> Absolutely. It was a risk that I was willing to make. <laughs> oh brother. <laughs> You know what, Dan, for, for that whole thing, I think you need to go back and watch the musical again. Uh, yeah, but I'm, can I watch it on half speed at least? I just, I really just don't want it to end. <laughs> well, it's already, what, an hour 20? If that's not long enough, you're just going to have to deal. Is there any way we could do like a YouTube poop cut of it? If you're willing to put in the time, go for it. Perfect. Coming in 2027. <laughs> part of the extended Grinch universe, or the EGU as I call it. <laughs> The ega, Rigu. <laughs> the ugh. <laughs> we'll be kicking things off with Frank, an origin story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd watch that over this again. Before going into one of my favorite films of this era, Yukariah Zachariah, The Grinch Who Stole Halloween 2. <laughs> <laughs> And then there's Yukari, and then there's the uh, the sequel to that, Yukari and his quote euphemism. Yes. <laughs> oh, the euphemism is its own film. That's going to spin off into the uh, the Cat in the Hat universe. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like a euphemism would fit right into the Mike Myers movie. Yeah. Mm. They probably wouldn't be clever enough to call it a euphemism, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Mike Myers movie is a euphemism, if we're being honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's all going to build to the revelation that all adaptations of all Doctor Zeus characters have happened in their own respective universes, leading to the multi crossover event of the year, in which Mike Myers, Jim Carrey, but we resurrect Boris Karloff. You, I don't know, AI or something. Um, <laughs> we get them all together to fight. I don't know Horton and his Green Eggs and Ham Army. That'll that'll do it. <laughs> I mean, I'd watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no it's an NBC musical we've come full circle <laughs> uh, that changes things I'm less inclined <laughs> to watch that now <laughs> yeah they all have to fight the NBC peacock in the finale <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm back on board <laughs> which incarnation which incarnation of the peacock uh, he's gone through time and pulled all iterations so it's oh. like a rainbow of pain in fact they're called the rainbow of pain <laughs> The pain bow. 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> Okay, well, this went off the rails, so we can we'll, we'll say goodbye for now. We will be back to watch or rank all versions of the Grinch so far. There'll probably be more. I would I'd be I would be surprised if Illumination didn't make a sequel at some point. <laughs> but <laughs> we will see you next time when we rank the Grinches. Thanks for listening to every version ever. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe and follow my co-hosts as well. My link tree and all of our links will be in the description below. If you want more of my content, all my podcasts are available on YouTube as well as most podcast platforms. If you enjoyed this show, check out one of the other podcasts or check out my Patreon for bonus and extended episodes you won't find anywhere else. We'll be back soon with another brand new episode, so thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.